In today's video, we're going to be using Adobe Photoshop to create a logo for a made-up company called Southside Vintage Clothing, and this is how it's going to look once it's finished. All right, so to get started today, we're going to go up to the File menu and make ourselves a new document. The document's going to be 1280 pixels width, 720 pixels height. Because we want to print this logo later, we want to set the resolution to high quality, which is 300 pixels per inch. And the color mode needs to be set to CMYK. That's another setting we use for printed documents as well. If we're only going to use this um, logo on the screen, on the computer screen, we'd stick with RGB color. But we're going to go with CMYK so we can print this later on. The background contents of this document just need to be set to white. And you can click on create. So here's our empty blank canvas that we're going to start with today. And the first thing we need to do is color this in a dark shade of gray. Okay, so... Over in your little color boxes over here, choose the top box, which is the foreground color. And I don't want you to select full on black. As a graphic designer told me once, there's nothing in this world that is actually colored completely black. So pitch black. Okay, so it looks a little bit fake if we use that. So let's go a really dark shade of gray. So just click up a little bit from completely black there and click OK. And then you need to grab your paint bucket tool from your toolbox. Usually hidden under your gradient tool here, so hold your mouse down on it until you see the paint bucket tool. Once you've got that selected, just click once on your canvas and it will color it in that dark shade of gray that you chose. From here, we want to draw a couple of circles on our page. All right, so you're going to need to go over to where your rectangle tool is here and just go down and select the ellipse tool. With the ellipse tool selected, you need to head up the top to the properties. And you just want to make sure that your fill color is set to no fill color. That means it's the white box with the red line going through it, because we don't want to fill our circle in. We do want a stroke, though, and the stroke needs to be white, so just select white. And we want to make the size 5 pixels. So either use the slider or just type in the box 5 pixels and press Enter. So once you've got a white stroke with 5 pixels, come down onto your canvas now. Hold Shift when you draw this circle. That way it'll draw a perfect circle for you. Hold shift and just simply click and drag out a nice big circle that fills a good chunk of the page. Using the move tool now from your toolbox, pick that circle up and get it in the center of the page. Okay, so use your guides. The pink guides should help you out and it will show you when you get to the center, which is right there. Okay, it should snap into position anyway. All right, so that's how our first circle is looking. What we're going to do now is head over to our layers panel here. We're going to double click on the word ellipse 1 and just rename it to, we'll call it outer circle. Then we're going to right click on the outer circle and duplicate that layer. Okay, and we're going to call it inner circle. Press OK. And you've now got two circles there, one on top of the other. With this um, inner circle selected, make sure you've got show transform controls checked at the top so you can see this bounding box. And I want you to hold down Alt and Shift on your keyboard at the same time and just resize that circle. Okay, we're going to bring it in, oh, I'll say about there. Okay, and press the little tick at the top when you're done to apply those changes. And you should now have two circles on your page looking like so. All right, from here we're going to draw a rectangle on the page. So back over to our Shapes tool. I'm going to select the Rectangle tool this time. For the Fill color, this time you can choose pure black because we're going to delete this color later anyways, but just choose black for now. And stroke we're going to turn off. So get the option with the red line running through it. And I simply want you to draw a rectangle that runs through the center of your document. Okay, we'll position it in a moment, but it needs to look something like that. Use your move tool now to get it right in the center. Okay, you should get your guides popping up showing you when you're in the center like that. And just drop it into position. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a third circle that's going to go in the middle of these two other ones. So I'm just going to click on the inner circle layer over here and duplicate that layer. And I'm going to give it the name middle circle. Press enter. All right, with the middle circle layer selected and the show transform controls turned on, Hold down Alt and Shift again and just make this circle a little bit bigger so it sits in the middle of the inner and the outer circle. Press the tick at the top when you're done. What we're going to do with this middle circle is get some text to wrap around it. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to grab the text tool, 
the type tool, sorry. And up the top, I want you to choose the font Gadagai. Okay, if you haven't got that font downloaded on your computer, just go to Google, search Gadagai um, font, and you can download it for free from a website such as legionfonts.com. All right, so back in Photoshop now. I'm going to choose Gadagai for my font. Sometimes it comes with bold or regular. You just want the regular one, so the skinnier version looks best. Size, oh, I might start with about size 24. We'll see how that looks. And the color needs to be white. Click OK. You can now click inside. Well, it doesn't matter where you click, actually, on your page. And we're just going to add the word Southside in capital letters. OK, you can use your Move tool to move that around. Okay, now you can see there's big gaps between each letter and mine. Okay, that's called the tracking. I'm going to need to adjust that. Yours probably doesn't look like this just yet, but I was playing with the tracking earlier on today, and Photoshop has remembered those settings, so I will need to adjust that. So using the Type tool, come back in and highlight all of your text. And up the top in your properties, hit this little folder here with some lines inside it. And that brings up your character properties where we can adjust the tracking, which is this little... um icon with the letters VA and a horizontal set of arrows. Okay, I'm just going to choose 200 and that pushes the text back together. Okay, I want to go bigger than that, I might double it to 400, press enter. That actually looks pretty good, so we might just work with 400 for the time being. It might be a little bit big still. I might even drop the size down a little bit to size 22. Get that text right in the center like so, that actually looks pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with how south side looks. The next thing that we need to do is add some text to this middle circle. Okay, I'm going to wrap some text around what I said I was going to do before. So what we need to do is pop over to our layers and select the middle circle layer. With the middle circle layer selected, we're going to grab our type tool again. Ensure that we've got the Gadigai font, uh, the size. Let's bump it down about size 8. Stick with white for your color. It makes... As I said before, make sure that middle circle layer is selected. And what you can do is when you move your mouse cursor over the top of that middle circle, it will change. And it shows you that you can actually type onto that layer or onto that circle. And the text will follow that path. All right, so I'm going to click on that path. And I'm simply going to write the word vintage in capital letters. All right, it's not sitting pretty at the moment. That's okay, we'll fix that in, in a sec. Um, using the, actually we won't use the move tool, we'll just go back with our type tool and just highlight it. And we're going to turn this tracking up a bit. It's at 400 at the moment. I'm going to bump it up about 750 and see how that looks. Yeah, you're going to put some more space between each of those letters. Then I'm going to go click back at the start there and just press tab a few times until my text comes around and is roughly in the center. I think somewhere about there looks good. And then I'll press the little tick at the top to apply those changes. Okay, that looks pretty good for now. What I might do is just hide that middle circle and just see how that's actually looking. Not bad. You can use the um, move tool to select your text and just nudge it down with the arrow keys if you'd like. Get a little bit more in the center of those two circles. Something like that looks pretty good. If you want you can grab your type tool again and click inside of this text and just press space if you want to push it around little nudges get it as close to the center as possible so it looks like it's wrapping around that circle nicely okay I think that looks pretty good all right the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in a little icon just here which is going to be a little crown okay and the way we're going to get that crown is by using a custom shape so over here in our rectangle tool we've actually got a custom shape tool okay and what you can do is you can go up the top here and you can see you've got all these different shapes that you can work with what I'll get you to do is hit the little cog on the right hand side there and just load in some shapes. And in the account I've given you some crown shapes. And when you double click on them, go to the bottom of the page and you'll see some crowns have been loaded in. I want you to select this crown here. Well, it actually doesn't matter what crown you select, but I'm going to select that one just there. You can choose any of those ones there if you like the looks of one over the other. And again, you don't have to use crowns. You can go through and have a look at some of these other shapes and choose one of them. It's up to you. But I'm going to go with this crown shape. So with that crown shape selected, I'm just going to simply, oh sorry, I'll make sure my fill color is white first of all. We do want to color it in white. 
no stroke again, hold shift, and simply draw a little crown onto the page. You want that right in the centre there, that looks pretty good. You can use your move tool to move it around if you'd like. Okay, that looks pretty sweet for now. Coming down on the other side of south side down here, we're just going to put some more text in that says 2018. So I'll grab my text tool again. Just click on my page and write 2018. Size 8 is fine for now. We can make it bigger or smaller a bit later on. Just get that centered as well. Okay, so something like that looks good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Um, the next thing we might do is we might chop off these outer parts of these circles. Okay, where this rectangle is, we're going to make the rectangle disappear and we're going to cut out those little bits of the circles that it's covering up as well. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is go over to my layers panel here and select the inner circle layer and the outer circle layer. So I'll hold down control and select both of them at once. I'm going to right click on those circle layers and simply rasterize the layers. And what this does is it will allow us to edit those circles, actually cut bits out of them. Alrighty. So the way we're going to cut these um, bits out of them is we're going to go and select this rectangle layer here, rectangle one. That's that black rectangle on our page. I want you to hold the control key on your keyboard and select that little rectangle next to the name rectangle one. And what that's going to do is it's going to bring up marching ants around your black rectangle just to show you that you've selected that shape. All right. After that, I want you to go down and click on the inner circle layer. You'll see that those little marching ants are still there. So what we have got now is that selection on the inner circle layer. And if I simply go up to edit and cut, that cuts away those inner circle bits there. If I just hide the rectangle, you'll see now I've cut away part of that inner circle. Okay, we want to do the same now for the outer circle. So I'll just show my rectangle again. So on the rectangle one layer, hold control and just click on this little rectangle shape and that will make a selection around the rectangle. Then go down and click on the outer circle layer. On the outer circle layer, you should still see those marching ants. Go up to edit and cut. And that's cut away some of the outer circle now. So what I can do with my rectangle one layer now is trash it. We don't need it anymore, so I'm just going to hit the trash can and delete it. Okay, and you can see now parts of those circles have been cut away. So this is starting to look really good. I guess the last thing that we really need to do is just get some text that comes down through here. Okay, and it's simply going to say clothing. So what we need to do is grab the text tool, or sorry, the type tool from our toolbox. And we need to select that middle circle layer again. So I'm going to go back over to my layers panel and select the middle circle layer. I'm also going to hit the little eye to show it again, so it comes back up. I'm going to hover over this middle circle and click on it, and I'm going to type in the word clothing. Oops, I want it to be in capitals. All right, now it's coming upside down, so what I'm going to do below the type tool here is a little black arrow called the path selection tool. You can actually click on this text and flip it over. Okay. You can also move it around a little bit by the looks of things. So let's move it into the center. And you should have something looking like that. Simply click on it and just drag it up. And that flipped it onto the other side of the line. And that's all done with that little path selection tool. Using my move tool now, I can move it around if I need to. But I think it's looking pretty good where it is. I'll just hide this middle circle layer for a moment again in my layers panel. So hit that little eye next to the middle circle. And you can click on clothing there and just nudge it around using your arrow keys. I might move it down a little bit, just till it's in the center. And I think that's looking pretty good. Okay, I'll just hide that box. So I think our logo's finished now. Uh, I might actually I might just move this crown down a little bit. I might even make it a little bit bigger. So I'll hold Shift and Alt, just make it a bit, bit bigger. Move it around a little. Hit the tick at the top when I'm done. Might nudge that 2018 up a bit as well. There we go. So that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that logo. So what you can do now to save it is just go to File, Save As, and since we want to print this later on, there's probably 
better file types to save it as but for the purpose of this tutorial I'm just going to save it as a JPEG image all right I'd probably save it as a PDF if I was going to be printing later on but we're going to save it as a JPEG just for the sake of this tutorial just give it the name logo or south side logo whatever you want to call it click save a little box will come up asking you what quality you want to save it at okay, anything above 10 is good press OK and you're all done